Hello, my name is Anubhav and in this video, I'll talk about secure remote access VPN architecture for AWS. This is a quick introduction video. Uh, I will talk about how you can gain access to your cloud resources in a secured way. In your data center, you can provision your firewall at the edge using uh, HA or native VPN clustering. Those features are not available in the cloud uh, because of layer 2 abstraction. So we don't have a native VPN clustering in the cloud, but you can still have a scalable solution. So I'm going to be first of all focusing on this particular design where uh, you have uh, multiple firewalls per availability zone and uh, this is a three-tier architecture. I covered this design in detail in my previous video. I'm going to add a link to that video in the description as well but just to give you a quick rundown of this particular design you have firewalls at the edge protecting your workloads in the cloud uh, you are terminating your remote access vpn ssl vpn specifically in this particular situation and you are doing load balancing of your vpn user based on uh, amazon route 53 and based on the dns queries so um, your user is going to initiate a query for a domain uh, maybe in swamivpn.com and uh, route 53 is going to decide where exactly that vpn user is going to connect so that way you can deploy multiple firewalls and you can access your workloads in the cloud in a scalable way you can simply provision a new firewall add it in your route 53 enable health checks enable ttl and you're good to go the other way of accessing your workloads in the cloud can be through your data center if you have direct connect between your data center and your cloud environment you can access your workloads directly as well but that is going to be costly because uh, when you will go to your data center your traffic will u-turn through the uh, direct connect and then you are given access to your cloud resources so that is going to add latency to your um, remote access vpn user experience now um, the model that i showed you uh, was a distributed model imagine with time when you grow your vpc when you have multiple vpcs it is really difficult to have a distributed model uh, if you have hundreds of hundreds of vpcs you cannot really go out and deploy firewall in each vpc because it is harder to manage deploy troubleshoot and it is impossible to run routing and it's very difficult to troubleshoot so what we have done is we have uh, a solution um, that can integrate with AWS Transit Gateway uh, and uh, you at the edge you will still have Cisco ASA and next generation firewall for doing your VPN specifically SSL VPN here because we want a remote access users to have a proper um, a good experience of accessing workloads in the cloud uh, so and the cool part of uh, Cisco ASA Next Generation Firewall is it's going to integrate pretty well with other secu Cisco security portfolio solutions like Duo for uh, a multi-factor authentication, Umbrella for DNS layer security and IP enforcement. You can also integrate it with AMP for file and malware analysis. Uh, for visibility, you can have Stealth Watch. If you have direct connect going back to your data center, you can still use your on-premise eyes for authentication as well as posture, which is really cool. Now on, on the AWS side, um, you can connect multiple VPCs using VPC peering, but VPC peering is uh, a point-to-point -point connection. If you have, let's say five VPCs, you will have to create a full mesh and pretty soon it, you are going to run in trouble because that is not a scalable way to connect VPCs. So AWS recently came out with AWS Transit Gateway, uh, which will provide you different types of attachments uh, when, when I say attachments different kinds of connections you can say so if you have VPC you can use transit gateway and you can use VPC attachment for connecting to your VPC 
uh, and you can also connect it to your direct connect as well if you have direct connect you can always connect in connect your direct connect with transit gateway as well using vpc attachment then you have vpn attachment vpn attachment is for those devices which are capable of doing ipsec like in this particular situation you can use asa in in the data center and you can run route based vpn and you can run bgp if you add any network in your data center you can simply advertise that in bgp and that route is automatically propagated in your aws environment as well uh, transit gateway is a regional concept so if you have multiple vpcs within a region you can always uh, go ahead and use transit gateway and interconnect your vpcs um, but if you want to have uh, a connection outside of the region then you can create uh, you can use peering connection as well what peering connection does it, it is going to enable connection between two transit vpcs for example if you have few vpcs in us east region you can have a transit gateway for east region and then you can have transit vpc for west region as well and using peering connection you can connect those two transit vpc uh, transit gateways now look at this particular uh, architecture uh, it is pretty scalable architecture we have um, few vpcs here so first of all this is designed on the concept of hub and spoke model uh, we have hub vpc where i'm going to be using multiple availability zones uh, in this particular case i have three availability zones and then i have spoke vpc and spoke one vpc and spoke two vpcs now these three vpcs are interconnected using a transit gateway and this transit gateway is connected to vpcs using vpc attachments i have one connection going towards my firewall in the data center as well and that part is vpn attachment now what exactly is going to happen is route 53 is going to provide me dns based load balancing so my user is going to send a dns request and based on the reply my vpn user is going to connect directly to the firewall so i can be given ip address of any of these firewalls available in in the route 53 uh, host record so what I'll do is, first of all, I'll uh, register a domain in my Route 53. Then I'll add a host a record. In the host records, I will specify IPs of my firewalls. I'll tell you in detail how exactly we do that in the next slide. So imagine you have uh, this architecture and then you have your uh, firewalls on the external interface of your firewall, which is ENI. ENI is Elastic Network Interface. You will have private IP address by default on that particular interface. What you need to do is once your firewall is deployed, you can use elastic IP address. You can associate an elastic IP address to this interface as well. So what I've done is I've associated elastic IP address to all the external interfaces of firewall one, firewall two, and firewall three. Now on my route 53, I have enabled weighted load balancing combined with health check. So what I'm doing here is I'm doing a health check on port 443 as well. So route 53 is sending probes to my device just to check whether the device is healthy or not. If device is not healthy, device is going to be removed from the load balancing. So what I have here is answamivpn.com and answamivpn points to these three addresses and Route 53 is responsible for um, doing complete load balancing for my SSL remote access VPN connection. Now VPN pool, it is really important to understand that we should have separate VPN pool per firewall and these pools should be outside of the side ranges that we are using in my VPCs. Reason why I want to have separate pool is to enable reverse uh, traffic, uh, so, so, so to enable symmetry. 
so that traffic if if i'm connected to firewall one i'll be given ip from this pool 10 slash 16 and i will configure routing in such a way that traffic will come back to the same firewall so th this is really important because uh, you can always go with source nat but source nat is not really scalable so uh, we would propose you to have separate vpn pool for each firewall now traffic is routed based on the route table if you see here i have route table in the spoke network uh, spoke networks and then i have route table in hub networks as well um, route tables are associated to the subnet you will add a route in your route table and traffic is routed based on the routes given in that route table so you need to associate route tables to the subnet and you will associate a route table to the transit gateway as well when you create a transit gateway by default for all the attachments that you have on your transit gateway you will see a default route table which will have all these four routes as a propagated routes so for this vpc attachment there is going to be route automatically for all these vpc attachment and vpn attachment there is going to be route automatically propagated to this particular route table so now let's double click on route table and understand how exactly you wanna use route table to route your traffic. Let's look at first route table here, um, which is associated to spoke uh, web subnet, spoke one web subnet. Now, if you look at 0 0.0016, which is my hub network, 2.00 slash 16 is my spoke subnet and 3.00 slash 16 is my data center subnet. So based on this route table, what I'm saying is, if you want to reach these subnets, go back to this attachment here. So I'm sending my traffic to my transit gateway. In addition to this, I want my workload to reach my VPN pool as well. So I have route for 10 hundred zero zero six slash 16, 10 200 zero zero slash 16. 10201 slash 16 pointing back to the same transit gateway reason why i'm doing this is because i need a reply packet to go back to transit gateway and in the transit gateway also i will add routes but before that i will go ahead and talk about other route table here it is going to be similar route table no changes you need to just specify uh, which uh, network you want to reach so from here 2.0 if you want to reach 1.0 or if you want to reach 0.0 .0 um, then you have to go to this VPC attachment apart from that you have routes for your VPN pools as well now let's look at the default route table of your transit gateway so I as I already mentioned that all the attachments will have routes propagated automatically for VPN pool you will go ahead and add those routes uh, explicitly in your route table and you will specify that these VPN pools are associated or located behind this VPN attachment here okay so pretty easy nothing fancy so uh, it's it's like adding route table uh, sorry static routes in your data center so same thing you are following here you need to enable your reverse traffic as well now um, I'm going to talk about route tables for these subnets uh, inside all the private subnets here blue subnets so first one is um, route for 0 0.0 slash 16 what is 0 0.0 uh, 1.0016 is my spoke vpc1 then i have route for this spoke then i have route for data center pointing back to this uh, vpc attachment and apart from that what i have done is i have gone to each firewall instance individually clicked on ETH2 interface which in my case is inside interface collected their ENI elastic network interface IDs and in the route table I have mentioned that 100.00 pool is located behind this ENI 200.0 pool is located behind this ENI 201.00 pool is located behind this ENI 
So it's pretty simple. You just need to grab ENI from your instance, go back to your route table, add a route and point that ENI as your next hop. Similar route table is attached here, um, no change. Similar kind of attached route table is attached to this submit as well. Now, let's look at another important thing. I can definitely merge these route tables into one route table and I can attach it to all the subnets. But the problem with that particular solution is gonna be if in future you decide to route traffic in a different way, then you might face some trouble. It is always recommended to have separate route table associated to inside interface, inside subnet of your firewall. Uh, because that way you have flexibility of using separate routes in each route table. Now, uh, in, in the outside, I could have gone with separate route tables, uh, but I don't want to do anything fancy in outside subnet. I want to route my unknown traffic to internet gateway, which is connected to the internet. So I have a default route pointing to IGW and this single route table is associated to all the three subnets. I can use separate route tables as well, but for this particular lab, I'm just going, going ahead with a single route table. Route for data center, you have this firewall here. Um, you have ASA uh, running 971 or higher code. You can run route-based VPN, which is uh, having VTI interfaces on your firewall. You can run BGP whenever you add any network in your data center, you can advertise that network into BGP. And because of this VPN attachment, Transit Gateway Gateway is automatically going to learn that um, uh, that advertisement, and it's going to be uh, going to be available in your VPC as well. Pretty simple. So you just need a route-based VPN capable firewall in the data center. In this example, I'm using ASA. So this is how the entire uh, design is um, deployed. So what I'm planning to do is I'm planning to have a quick demo video on this in a couple of days. I have already um, deployed everything in my AWS account. I'm just tweaking it a little bit. And once complete video is available, I will go ahead and record it and then just polish it somewhere here and there. And then I will go ahead and post it to YouTube as well. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.